Hey everybody, welcome to the Zelda Informer Podcast, episode 37. My name is Adam, and here's the news from this past week. The Zelda theme 3DS carrying case has returned to Europe's club Nintendo, the Majora's Mask 3D any% percent record was beaten twice in one day, Nintendo News Network showed off the unused NES Zelda content, we finally learned how to enter the Nintendo World Championship, the squid-based shooter Splatoon did not originally feature squids in the latest release, but Iwata asks. Also, Bowser became Nintendo's new VP of sales, Doom's modern remake recently released a 10 second trailer, Phil Spencer says the Kinect still matters, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt released this week to universal acclaim, and the Warcraft movie recently released a few images of one of its orc characters, Orgrim, in an interview with Wired Magazine. All this happened this week and more, we're going to be talking about a few pieces, uh, we'll be talking about some fan topics, as always, thanks to those of you who submitted fan topics. If you have any of your own, please submit those to us at zeldainformerpodcast at gmail.com. Once again, that's zeldainformerpodcast at gmail.com. This week's opening theme song is brought to you by Husky by the Geek, which we're finally bringing back after a little hiatus. And this week's outro theme is brought to us by Zorik. Thanks again to everyone who contributed to this week's episode. Once again, my name is Adam, and this week I'm joined by... The coolest and raddest co-host, Chris. What's going on, guys? Hey. How's it going? It's Caleb again. Glad to see all your pretty faces. And Sarah, because everyone loves me. Oh, and I'm Jeffers, aka Top Spin the Fuzzy. Hello. Glad to have you. <laughs> Glad to have us with you, man. Wow. <laughs> Glad to Words. have us with you. Can't do anything. You really okay. just knocked that so... out of the park, dude. <laughs> okay. So you did it. Just a little backstory. I've been traveling all day, so I'm very tired. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's not an excuse. It's not an excuse, excuse. it's Bring just your kind a of a game. warning. <laughs> not your C-minus game. I have two now. A games. And they're Ad- Adam first. has an A and One is a C A-s game. game. Bring your Adam game. I don't know if we're allowed to say that. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you. you. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah, guys. Uh, so, let's start off with a fan topic this week. We, really, we never really do that. I decided that, you know, let's try and change it up. All right. uh, what? What? This what? Co- <laughs> What's uh, the topic? Come on, hit me, baby. One more time, etc. Uh, this comes to us from Joe. Mm-hmm. I Thanks, think Joe. <laughs> Joe says, I think it'd be interesting to have a Zelda platformer similar to Mario. Mario 64, in my mind, was the least traditional Mario game. I'd like to see the, the opposite with Zelda, Link scaling a large castle or up Death Mountain. I would imagine this as a DS game. Thoughts? Don't we have DS uh, games? No. What are well, DS games? I'm missing, I guess I'm missing the, the point. with you. And, well, I mean, they're trying to say that it would be interesting to just have a purely platforming action-based Zelda game, which kind of takes away from yeah, it kind of takes away from the whole idea of a Zelda game, doesn't it? I'm trying Zelda to like, exploring and doing I, dungeons. I'm, and I'm whatever. trying to I'm trying to measure, I mean, imagine like in a Link. Way, Someone that's... needs to animate this seriously. At like Link just like skinned over Mario and like stepping on like. Stalfos and, and Skull Kids and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's really all I can imagine. There were a lot of parts in, like, Zelda 2 that seemed very platformer-esque. Um, they oh, just well, to add... a lot of Zelda 2 was platformer, but it was also weird and still had the whole, that... like, exploring dungeons thing, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's... The... So, I mean, I just I don't, don't think that something like that could really work for Zelda. It's a, Actually... I mean... What yeah, do you think, well, Adam? especially not... Because they mentioned Mario 64, and I don't think... I don't think that works at all. Well, Mario I, I, that 64. Works for Mar- that works for Mario. Yeah, Mario Mario's 64. Very open. Well, I mean, because he was always a platformer. Yeah. Right. Mario's, That's my argument yeah. for sure. Mario 64 branched out of what um, the Mario style used to be, because it used to be the side scrolling platformer. But then right. they switched when to more they got 3D. The 3D technology. Yeah. Because they, yeah. they wanted to try out the new medium, I guess, of 3D. Yeah. Um, but I thought about the, the question. I, I was really interested by the idea of Link scaling a castle or up Death Mountain because I would love to see more vertical play with uh, a Zelda game because we have a lot of platforming, uh, Zelda 2, for example, and we see a lot of like adventuring, but we never see him like... You have the grappling hook, but it really feels like you're going across chasms more than anything. You're never really going up. True. You're never really... It would kind of be interesting to see one have Zelda game where it's just... Have you played the Water just... Temple? Listen. We don't talk about that here. Water Temple is tedious. And You're else. tedious. How do you not get through the Water Temple? I never understood that. It, I, it, it takes me like no, no, less no. than... It's not hard. It just is... It's annoying. Yeah, it's just it's annoying. It's just a poorly designed temple. <laughs> mm-hmm. See, I'm a scuba well, diver, so that temple for me like spoke to my heart. Oh, 
Well, poor you. Did it or, give you cardiac pretty... arrest? And like you were like, uh -huh. do you often wear iron boots when you scuba? Uh, do you scuba? I mean, well, how I don't do wear iron dive? boots, but I, I I do stick iron around my waist. It... Oh, I no, I can't. No comments oh. coming to mind, and I just remember that this channel is PG, so. Well, to yeah, wrap up the sucks. question, yeah. Joe. Um, I mean, actually, I have a little bit more to say on it, actually. Um, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, Joe, like you're the a nerd. CDI games a little more platformer esque as well, even though the CDI this is, is like why no terrible. one likes you, Chris. No, but I'm like, that's why. <laughs> that's why I don't think a platformer could work because then we're gonna get another Z CDI yeah. or Zelda two esque. Well, type I, of I game. got it, guys. Platformer, okay. Instead of like Doctor Mario, it's like the Great Fairies pill machine or something. You have to like match up the the colored fairies like the jewel. <laughs> That's a puzzle game. That's not a platformer. <laughs> that was the joke, damn it. <laughs> Thank you, Jeffers. Swear uh, jar, right now. We we talked about this a little last week. Um, what? Yeah, we about, did. Uh, about we... Zelda staying Zelda and kind of like not branching out and stuff. I think it was specifically for like wanting a Metroidvania type Zelda game. Mm -hmm. Which Someone... I, I personally disagree with. Like, we have Hyrule Warriors, which is yeah, cool yeah. and all. But I think something like Zelda or Nintendo in general, they kind of have an IP for each type of genre and they should kind of keep those IPs, those genres, and not try to, like, mix and match them all too much. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. But that's I, just my own personal opinion. I, it's a, I mean, it, you have a good point with that. I just think that uh, I'm not thinking of it like a Metroidvania sort of thing. I'm thinking, like I said earlier, uh, if anyone's played the God of War games, there are several scenes where you climb up mountains, uh, uh, like Mount Olympus, for example. There's a big scene where you're climbing up Mount Olympus, uh, either on Harrow's our um, guy is back. Not to interrupt you, but I'm, I know but that we were talking about Metroidvanias last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I'm, saying, I'm saying like, yeah, I know. There could be a good um, sort of angle, a good way to explore the environments by doing this sort of thing. Like, I mean, there's there's been several like claw based items. I'd like to see one that's definitely for climbing. That would definitely make vertical mobility and vertical puzzles more of a thing because it feels like with <clears throat> with like wall based or roof based puzzles, it's usually just Hit that glowy thing over there. Yeah, that's I was it. Gonna say that there's, a lot I mean, of the like vertical inclined uh, there's challenges not much... or quote unquote puzzles in the 3D Zelda games. It's just a lot of like look over there and shoot a thing. Hey, I mean, it's not, it's not really, that. Uh... It's I wanna, them not I wanna... really exploring it. They're not really giving it enough time mm -hmm. and thought. They're not like saying like, okay, and what I'll... can we do with Another this? Another trope that they do a lot in the in the 3D Zeldas, as far as puzzles goes, is just like pushing a block to a spot. Mm -hmm. and that's literally it or an item the three the three yeah. is pushing a block to a spot item or i, I honestly wall think button. that changed when um a link between worlds came out though link between worlds is not a 3d between zelda world game was great. i mean well, nope it, it's sort it of is, is a top down 2d zelda game well there was the ancient spinner in twilight princess you mean the one that served Stop. one function once and that's it yep oh you mean the rail shooter. i mean great well, I mean, Jeff, when you say, like, there's one function once, in Ocarina of Time, you did have Link scale Mount Doom. I was going to bring that up, too, yeah. You have to, like, go up that thing and down that thing. Yeah. Deliver those like, damn eye drops. twice. Exactly. I mean, like, it didn't seem like the most... I that um, at all. <laughs> it didn't seem like the most, like, you know, craziest thing that happening in the game, but I mean, like, I, I figured that, because that's not what they're trying to, like, bring with a Zelda game. They don't want you to have to focus on, like, climbing up and down or have that... Well, vertical. but it, it kind of gives you more reason to look around your environment. It takes advantage of a 3D world when you well, say... climbing every up a spot is kind of different from having one item that you get used once. Yeah. yeah. I like, definitely think that yeah. we're going to see a lot more, you know, dynamic with camera angles and puzzles, though, in, in Zelda U, though. Because now that they want to make the world very, like... They want to make it more open world, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have to include a lot more things to go with it. They want to make us explore every single part of that world. Well, that's well they the don't thing. They can... necessarily even have to have a lot more things No, I, that I mean, that's, use, that's what they've said to us they pretty much. To... They could just condense yeah. it to making things more well thought out, more explored as like well, a single I think object. They would have to do a lot of playing with the control scheme, like a lot more mm -hmm. ways that you interact with things as opposed to like things that you use. Yeah. So that you could explore the world and it doesn't just get stale and like you're wandering around. I mean, I don't feel like it's gonna be like that. I mean, although just given the fact that the Wii U and the gamepad are hand in hand for every Wii U title like ever, it's gonna it's kind of it's gonna limit us 
for like you know some of the things that we we want to have in the game because they want to utilize that gamepad. That is the controller for the Wii U. It looked like like from the brief gameplay that they showed, it looked like the gamepad was mostly just used for the map. For the map, yeah, right. Possibly yeah. to like look at your po- items. And yeah, like possibly. I mean. For- your inventory, but that's mm-hmm. that looked like it was about it, yeah. And that was their idea since the uh, since the demo that they showed at E3 mm-hmm. for the Wii U's. I feel like it's going to change though. So. I I feel like it's it's going to have a lot more importance than what like, the just, uh, the gamepad, the gamepad Maybe? itself. Yeah, Maybe? I wouldn't be totally opposed to that. Like in um, the Wind Waker remake, I actually liked aiming at stuff with the gamepad. Gyroscope is a lot better than motion controls. Mm-hmm. So it, it yeah, was very yeah, simple and straightforward. I'm not. I hated playing Twilight Princess on the Wii because of the motion controls. Agreed. Um, oh, mm-hmm. so agreed. Yeah, but I mean, like, I, yeah. I think because of the system, they're gonna try to optimize the game for the system, like to to utilize what they have. They're, they're gonna not, make as it long definitely as they give you the option. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's that's what I prefer. I prefer controlling options because they're people not gonna like give us the controls. option to use a pro controller or anything like that. Or I just want the could. option to switch between motion control and basic control. Yeah, I prefer that. Might as well throw yeah. in the ability to use the pro controller then. Which I, You're right. I, I, but I doubt they're going to do that. They, I mean, it depends sure. on what they put on the gamepad. Right. Because they can't like put that on the screen. I mean, where you put what really matters. Uh, speaking of speaking of where you put where you're putting things, that sounds terrible. Uh, wow. But wow. I will explain why. Joe had another topic for us that I would like to get into. I would like to hear your opinions on where Link keeps all of his gear. How do you think all of his items fit under his shield? My theory is magic, witchcraft, and the Illuminati. Have you ever seen Mary Poppins, Joe? <laughs> no, or Harry Potter, because like Hermione Granger has that bag that like she stuffs oh, everything. I was, in. Just, I was gonna re- reference Dungeons or Harry and Poppins Dragons or with a bag Pathfinder. Of yeah, yeah. Like this. Yeah. I mean, come it's on. Just hammer space. Just make sure it's not hammer a space. bag of devouring. Or what if it's like yep. Dragon Ball Z? So he has everything in capsules, and like he just makes it all bigger when he needs it. Wouldn't that kind of like give us sort of post-apocalyptic future kind of like vibe to everything? If you just had somebody's that made that theory at some point, I'm like, sure. <laughs> like a really yeah. futuristic shrink size minimizing object that survived. I mean, it could just be an enchantment with a with a pocket dimension. What is this? A world world with magic? Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, yes. like magic. Yes. Oh. It is. oh, then I guess yeah, could happen. <laughs> well, on, yeah, it, that's probably like the way he stuffs everything in himself, or capsules, because he's secretly I mean, like Capsule Corp. I used to see pictures of uh, I think it was linked to the past Link or just uh, the original Link uh, from Legend of Zelda NES, uh, where he's like carrying all of his equipment on him. Like he has the bow, he has the arrows, he has the shield, and everything. You kinda, yeah, you kind of see it forming on him. It was a cool image. I, I don't know what it was. Just like he looks prepared, and it's, it wasn't like too much. It was it's just more of enough. A, a Western type of look, though. Yeah, I suppose. It's, like, more sort of, like... Got a problem I think with Westerners? Mm-hmm. No, <laughs> I don't have a problem with Westerners, but, like, you, when you look you. at, like... I will. <laughs> it's an it's an art style, I guess. It's just, like, we like to have things, like, showing ready to be used. Yeah, compared to, like, you know, a lot of, I, I guess... it's I'm not, I don't want to say, like, RPG games, but I, I'm going to. So, like, JRPG games, like, you see all, like, the items, like, usually you don't see them at all. You would have to go into your inventory and then, like, grab out the items like that, switch things out, like, in any, you know, Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy. Uh, I'm just naming those because those are the ones on the top of my head. Compared to, like, uh, Skyrim or Fallout or all this stuff, you want to take stuff out, like, yo, know, it's, it's, it's like, you see kind of your stuff, you what? see your gear. Dude, Skyrim, you can carry, like, 50 dragon heads and, like... <laughs> You well, don't see you, that sh- No, but you see, like, your your <laughs> weapons and stuff that you have on you. Or like, I'll only use a better example. Uh, or, like... I would love to just see a picture of someone from Skyrim carrying, a, like, a bag of... Dra- like, just dragging right? dragon yeah, heads exactly. along the ground. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Like, what are you doing with all those? Gonna I make just, some stuff? I think... Don't worry for, about it. As far as yeah. items, though, like, items are... Do kill a dragon. Are more, like, aesthetic, <laughs> aesthetically pleasing to us Westerners compared to, like, items being shown in you know eastern games i feel like part of that is just because it's like preserving the character design though yeah definitely yeah no i I can see that instead of any logical reason it's just like we like the way that we made the character look. well i mean there's also enhancing the character design with items yeah uh in zelda u you're gonna be i think it seems like you're gonna be using your horse a lot more 
uh, mm-hmm. to like just to get well, from place. The to... map is huge. Yeah, and it's it's definitely designed for you know horseback uh, also movement, that parachute just thing. horseback action. So yeah. it'd be really cool to see your stuff kind of like like being added to the horse's inventory. So as you get more items, like you see the bow and arrows, like on the, oh, the yeah. horse's what back. What if by the end of the game like, he looks like yeah. a pack a pack donkey? I mean that pretty much be <laughs> yeah. it. That'd be so funny. Yeah, he has like yeah. all the bags stacked on top of him. <laughs> like, upon his oh, like die. A, like a cartoony sort of like. Yeah, that'd be really funny. That'd be kind of cool, I guess. <laughs> I used to think that um that basically Link had access to the same interface that you did. What do you mean? Like you you know how in the in the game. Oh, okay. So when you open up the game menu and like Link to the Past, and it, that menu drops down, he has that essentially. Yeah, I mean, as a kid, that's what I used to imagine it as. Because... Oh, you could actually imagine like he's looking into a bag, like he's opening it up, and he just sees everything floating. There. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of what it was. It was floating. like you know, okay, so I need this, so he just like opens up his inventory space, and I know I pull this out. And to me, that that's just how it worked in my head. Because it was like, well, where does he stick it? Well, he must have access to the inventory space because where else would it go? Up his butt? You know, I understand like why that would. <laughs> what if like, he could you know, just summon them? A... Like in most games, he has magic power. So what yeah, if he I mean, could everything is powered by magic. From where yeah. from wherever? Yeah, in I understand most games... like the, the curiosity behind like all of that. But honestly, like as a kid playing Zelda, I'd, I didn't give. I didn't give a crap about, like, where my stuff was. I was just like, oh, okay, let me just go to my items, grab it. Like, playing Majora's Mask and collecting all, like, 30-something masks. I didn't ask, like, once or twice, oh, where does he keep all those masks? Where do they go? I just... You don't do that when you play these types of games. You just... Yeah, when you when you just I mean, go, it's video game. That's what video game do. It depends on the game. Where... In all video games. Like, where does, where does Ash keep, like, 100,000 Master Balls and 100... Ultra balls and a hundred. Excuse me, in the PC, balls. thank you. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm talking about empty Pokeballs that you buy from the store. They you get really he tiny. Uh, all you them. put it. Oh yeah, yeah the Pokeballs start out answer. tiny. Those think those about those five, shrimp, dude. And every character has a backpack them. made into their character design from the start. Yep. Yeah. You know how small that Jerk backpack wad. is. You know how small the backpack yeah, is. You know how small the Pokeballs get. They get like pebble size. Not to mention everything. And Ash doesn't. Carry Chris, potions? they've managed joking? to take animals and turn them into computer Im- like images yeah. and I'm like saying, things. I'm just like, saying. I think like, they can a lot do of inconsistencies with video games. So stop worrying about it. Well, like, it's I'm, I'm not worried side. about it, kinda, it. It's a theory. It kind of begs the question: a Could you? Game. Would you be more? Would it be more? What? It kind of begs the question: You could kind of. Would would you prefer to see a game where you know you have the inventory, like the the massive in- inventory? But you see the items on you, and that kind of affects the way the game is played. Or would you rather, like uh, Skyrim, for example, has a weight limit? Yeah, I hate carry. it. I hate that. Oh, it's so yeah, but I it mean... doesn't show you the character carrying anything, so it's kind of like why it's the worst of both worlds. You, yeah, it's yeah. You you don't hardly have any physical visual representation. You have to like look and see the actual number. It would be good if after a certain point, your character starts to accumulate different like bags and like backpacks on their actual model. No, but, uh, I, I I liked what Jeff was saying earlier before how they they want to preserve like character models and stuff like that because right, I, I, right. I believe in stuff like that like in the game where I'd rather have it so I could just see the character what they look like regularly without holding all that stuff and then I'd press start and I go see uh, what my character does have and what they do collect throughout. the Well, game. in games like the Banner Saga, you your your caravan grows in size as you collect more things as you grow. Uh, you get more food resources, more just uh, weapons and armor and things like that. Your caravan size will grow. Right. So you get a visual representation during the uh, traveling sequences, but not during the battle sequences. So you preserve character models, but you also give the player a visual idea of what their oh, what, what actual character is much bringing the with them. Yeah, exactly. And it, it I kinda... rarely to never want to see my items on my character. I just want to, if I change my armor, I want my armor to change with me. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, same that... thing with the weapon. When, you know, also that, yes. That's important yeah. to oh, me. Oh, that bothers me when a game like is like you got the gold sword and you just have the same silver sword. Yeah, that's what well, I was liked about yeah. the original Link to the Past because you got the weapon changes. Like you could see them. You could see that you got a better sword. Didn't that when also I... happen like the original original Zelda though? I don't think like when you got the white sword, your sword stopped being like a, a stupid little white brown thing. White sword. Well, I mean, now that's a common practice now in all the Zelda games. Like, when mm-hmm. you get a newer sword, or any newer item, really, like, an upgrade to your shield. I mean, yeah, but, I mean, that's been around for forever. Well, I mean, forever, so. I just mean that, like, right. there's, like, the three levels, so it's, like, I don't know, just something that I definitely noticed when I played Link to the Past, not something I really just kind of overlooked when I played the original NES Zelda. 
Actually, you know, it's it's things like that when they don't happen in like um if you're playing in MMOs, it's fifty fifty depending on which MMO you're playing, or like MOBAs. Like if you're playing like League of Legends or Heroes of the Storm, or or actually not Heroes of the Storm because they don't have items. But if you're playing League of Legends and like you get you buy bonus items or something like that, they don't show on your character at all. It's just like a bonus that you get. And yeah. w- when I started playing League of Legends, I was like, oh, it's, it's bogus. What the, what the heck am I doing? Like, why am I spending if, like, it's just going to help me out, like, I guess in the long run. I kind of want aesthetics as well when I play a game. I think I saw recently a skin that makes your character link. Well, I mean, that's a skin. I'm I'm talking about, like, just bonuses when you get, like, in-game. Like, while, right, you're, right. In your, while right. you're playing, like, a match. That's that's just not something... Mm. I, I'm not saying that that turned me away from League of Legends, but I was just like, man... Well, in a lot of cases, it wouldn't make a lot of sense. Like, for example, there are ranged characters that their core items involve swords. And it's like, "Mm, I don't know how that works. Aesthetically. For something like League, it can definitely slide. It's an exception. I mean, alright, so then there's another game that Adam and I started playing. We played a little while back called uh, Gauntlet. It's like, Oh, yeah, we played the uh, reboot for the PC. It it was pretty good. Yeah, if you like the original Gauntlet games, uh, Gauntlet is a one of the first dungeon crawlers. Uh, they have Ever? had, I think so, on on console yeah, at least. About right. Yeah, yeah, and then they uh, made it one for the PC. They made a Dark Legacy on GameCube, which I'm sure some of you have played. Oh so, God, that was the best. That Dude, game that is too the, good. It, that it was the best. That was my first. Was, that was my introduction yeah. to the uh, Gauntlet series. Yeah, but I the, still uh, like playing that game today. The so regular. The new one that just came out on uh, PC is more true to like original form, which is yeah. basic arcade. Uh, not the there's no leveling up system with the the items and everything. Well, yeah, oh, there okay. is. Well, actually, there okay. is. Is the thing. Um, it just really. Fl- oh yeah, yeah, there is. There's like a slight leveling. It's not the same like intensity as in Gauntlet. Uh, Dark you, Legacy. You, no, you have to like buy them with a with the gold that you collect from the levels. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Which is it's okay, but like some of the you can buy bonuses too. Or uh, I don't want I don't know if they're if they change your character aesthetically. Actually, no, some of them do, but not all of them do is the thing. So some of them really do. Like I know that every time you increase the like, why would they have give you the option to for like both of them and not like, uh, like why would they give you the option for like oh you can change some of these like visual aspects but like these bonuses you can't. Like that doesn't make sense to me. I get if it's like magic bonus like oh you can't really show magic, you know, on your character like. You know, because it's just like kind of like a power, but I mean, like right. things like boot, like you know, pieces of articles of clothing, like boots or hats or like capes or sh- stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like you could easily mm-hmm. put those in. So, uh-huh. I mean, I don't know. Games are uh-huh. games. Yeah, and like I said earlier, uh, Zelda U. I hope it has uh, some sort of like more more visual representation than we usually get. Uh, speaking of Zelda U. We have another fan topic from this week uh, from Jacob from Kansas, who writes, I was hoping that Zelda U might be a sequel to Majora's Mask. Probably unlikely, but I really want to know what happens to Ocarina slash Majora Link before he becomes the Hero Shade. Maybe he ditches the sword as his main and finds the high-tech arrow thing on his way back to Hyrule. It could also account for his age. He doesn't appear too old, but not too young either. However... He would have ditched the green and gone for the new blue clothes. Plus, his hair isn't consistent. What do you guys think? Thank you for the opportunity to send in questions. I'd love to hear it on the show. Thanks, guys. Jacob from Texas. Thank you, Jacob from Texas. You actually sent us a few topics this week. I thought he was from uh, Kansas. Kansas. Wow. Kansas. Wow. If so I tired. Mistaken, you said My Kansas, best friend so. in the world is from Kansas, and he's a cool guy. Who's your best friend in the world? His name is Not Wolfie you. Rock lips. Yeah. <laughs> his name is what? His name is Wolfgang. Oh, that's a cool name. That's a rad name. Dude. Is that his yeah. first name? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. 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 Anyway, He's what do you guys hardcore. think? Uh, uh, I don't think it will be a sequel. I don't think it. It's a sequel to. It? Uh, it's it's possible, but you know, we we all we are we all uh, already know that Link in Zelda U is a is a woman. Just kidding. Just, just, just kidding. <laughs> I was about to be like, Sarah, did you get the I was going to be like, wait, what? Sarah, do? How, do you, how do you not know the first thing about Zelda? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just um, kidding. Uh, I'm literally anything's possible, also, but it's We're just getting I the mean, trolls going. 
yeah, I, I honestly, I, I really don't believe that the the arrow is going to be like the new main weapon. I believe the master sword will always no. be, you know, a key element to a Zelda game. Oh yeah, or, although I mean, it looks it's like not the, the master the sword like... is playing a much bigger role in this game. Of course, it looks yeah, like it's much more. It would be interesting to make be. retrieving or recreating or something with the master sword like being a sort of loftier goal. Like in Link to the Past, you have to get the master sword after like a, a few trials, it, like it. it a lot of Zelda games, you have to go find the Master Sword, obviously. Right. But I feel like, as of late, it's not really the same sort of prestige. I mean, with well, Skyward... It's like, it's like a set plot point, and it's not like you're building up to anything. It's just they give it to you at some point. Yeah, it's like, here's the Master Sword, woo. It's like, there isn't that same level of excitement you first used to feel when you got the Master Sword and feel like, yeah, I'm going to take everyone down now. What would yeah, be because cool, it was though... like a goal before, right? Yeah, it like, was definitely a goal. You had to goal. work towards getting the Master Sword... Mm-hmm. Even in Ocarina of Time, it was like you had to figure out how you to, had to, beat, like, the you first had to three beat all the bosses. temples, and yeah. you had to get the Song of Time and the Ocarina of Time and all that. Yeah, yeah, they did the the same thing that they did in Link to the Past: three items to open the chamber. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, yeah. I think what they could do, which is a little more likely, is that they could introduce you to the bow first before the sword, mm-hmm. and of course, use the, you could utilize your bow to get the sword. That would be an interesting. What I think like, is going to happen with the in terms of that is your bow is probably going to end up being your main weapon when you're on the when you're on the overworld map because mm-hmm. it seems a lot more open, so you'll probably be more likely to use to uh, use a ranged attack as opposed well, to just yeah running while you're on your horse, horse and such. Yeah, exactly. Like... Yeah, and um, yeah, and so you'll probably use your sword more when you're in dungeons and whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. Um... Like, looking at the timeline again, I actually pulled it up. I believe that if they're going to stick Zelda U anyway, that it might actually be during the era of prosperity between Skyward Sword and the Minish Cap. It's possible. Hmm. Minish Cap. Interesting. I remember thinking that it would have to either... Some people were saying before Skyward Sword, and I said that's not really no, possible. No, not really possible considering before. The, considering the current canon, which is based on uh, the Hyrule Historia, has um, the Skyward Sword taking place almost immediately after the comic at the very end of the of the uh, novel? Weren't yeah. there two um, other games added to the Hyrule Historia that like weren't a Link Between Worlds and like this other game? Weren't they added? Link to Between it Worlds is added right after a Link to the Past, I believe. Okay. No, yeah. no, sorry. After Link to the Past's journey, so Link's Awakening. I okay. believe it was the last one. Yeah, Link's Awakening. Because I forget when the Hyrule Historia came out. It's, okay. That's in the era of light and dark. Right, right. I was thinking it would happen after, um, either between uh, when the the new land is discovered in the, the Spirit Tracks timeline, or after, uh, when, basically after the new continent is discovered, they discover even, even more land, and that's where it could possibly. Yeah, I think. I mean, I mean, there's a few places they they could put it, and I mean, mm-hmm. it's it's totally possible that it could go after Manjaro's Max. This is what he does after, like the in between years before he becomes the Shade. It could be him exploring the new continent after the spirit tracks, um, or it could it could literally be uh, during the establishment of Hyrule Kingdom, because there's yeah, so much awful. there's so much open space, mm-hmm. right? It leads me to believe that it will be during a time when there's not a lot of establishment in the cities, right? Right. Which makes sense considering what we've seen of the map, and there's not like a whole lot of anything, and it's just like a lot of wilds and stuff. Mm-hmm. There's a good it chance also... that they could just basically say this isn't part of the timeline. It's possible. Um, I did. I do like that the the idea of it being after Majora's Mask, where basically it's kind of a departure from what the hero is, where he's trying to d- define himself as a as a person. Because like the entire idea of Majora's Mask is uh, kind of being lost, uh, a, a a journey of discovery, like who you are. I mean, he's the the Ocarina Link, Hero of Time Link has been kind of confused as to who he is since day one. He didn't know his parents. He felt different from the other uh, Kokiri children. Um, and He lost his best friend. He loses his best friend. He loses uh, the love of his life. He loses pretty much everything yep. uh, leading up to the end of Majora's Mask. And it would be kind of cool if he... kind of makes me think of how at the end of uh, Majora's Mask he does something that while helps everyone is almost unremembered and i think he kind of comes to terms with the fact that he has to start doing things for himself possibly to like 
you know, it's it's not about, you know, who remembers what you did, who remembers why you did it, because that's happened twice that he's done things that basically save the world and no one can really know. Um, he starts to go out and explore. And so he finds all this land. He finds this new place and uh, he starts to ditch the green because that is associated with his former life, the life that he left behind. Well, also, he would have grown out of it. That's true. He was a child. He, he could make more? I, 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 mm, just, I don't know. I don't think that it is hard to find green clothing. Are you sure? How, how sure are you of that? Next time on ZI's <laughs> podcast, I will let you know how hard it is to find green clothing. <laughs> well, yeah. It's not that Naturally, hard. It's you actually to... not that hard to find green clothing. ZI podcast in the field. Name me well, five different colors that green could go with besides, like, white and black. And don't say purple. Brown. What? Purple. Brown. Eh. Yeah. Beige. Brown. Dark brown. Beige. It's very earthy. Purple. They work yeah, together. Yeah, it, it could go together, but, like, green can only go with, like, a select few colors compared to, like... Guys. Guys. Purple. Why the hell this did is, you bring that up? This is my I'm just topic saying. right here, being the resident right. female. Green can okay. go with anything. It depends on the shade and the tone. Mm. Oh, yeah. Saturation. Saturation. I want to find... It's almost as if it's, like, the most common color in nature. It also... Put a dark green Chris, with an depends... aqua blue... Um, you will, what you're going to accessorize with or what exactly on your garb is green like if you're wearing green pants you'd want to wear like a white or beige top green However, pants oh my god I would never be caught in green, <laughs> pants. green pants I used to wear green pants well dude like a like a dark grayish green it could be yep. alright where would you wear green pants to anywhere you want uh everyday life <laughs> My Duck Dynasty parties. Shut up, Caleb. Oh yeah, wait, green um, season. the forest, <laughs> the army, the, <laughs> the world potentially. So, what do you guys think about the idea of it being after Majora's Mask? Possible, um, plausible, definitely not. Big possible, Majora's but Mask fan. Unlikely. I gotta say, yeah, I don't think it's very likely. As much as I would like to have a Majora's Mask sequel, don't think that's the case. I st- I, I, st- I want to say that so well me. Zelda um, used still in like before the the part in the history where it's like the heroes triumphant or the heroes defeated. I want to say it's still in like the the pre side of everything. So it's still with Ocarina of Time, Four Swords, Minish Cap, and Skyward Sword. Yeah, like I said, right, in between right. Skyward Sword and Minish Cap. Yeah, I mean, I would I, anything it's... next to Minish Cap is just like equal. Yes. Heck, they could even like go into like better. bigger and like they could introduce they could introduce Ezlo as like an, an earlier form in this game and before like, he got like, turned into a hat. They could. Oh wait, no. I want him as always as a hat. They That's could the branch well, off that... and make a whole new timeline. It's like during Skyward Sword, maybe Link never actually defeats Demise, and Zelda actually stays in hibernation, and he is defeated and reborn and needs to try again as a bear. As a bear. Dude, I would absolutely play that. <laughs> Legend of Bear. <laughs> he has to defeat them with his bare hands. Oh. With his bare hands. Oh, you're so funny. He, I bet yeah, you he, he has gets, the right to bear arms. He gets arms. the master claws. Oh, God. I feel like I need to hang up the call no. now, just from that joke. No, unacceptable. That just pun, was, right pun was kind of sticky. He, he knows his right. Second Amendment yes, rights. Um, but Jeff, you mentioned that your favorite game in the Zelda series is Majora's Mask. 100 percent 10 really? out of 10 yeah that's like the why is that what do you, what do you mean why is that what about the game you like that's the that's the go-to game for the well i think part much. of the reason is because it like ignores a lot of zelda tropes like the triforce and ganon and zelda and the master sword and hyrule in general it just kind of like throws that all aside and does its own thing so you like it because it's the least Zelda game. No, I like it because it tries different things. <laughs> Caleb's I calling like it out. because it doesn't like just stick to That's why I like formula. It. You know what I'm saying? Instead yeah. of just being like, well, it's a Zelda game, so it's got to be in high rules. It's got to have the Master much, Sword. It, it's got to it have the Triforce. It 75% of the assets from like an actual Zelda title. Like which is smart. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but, no, that's good. Know. That's fine. I, I, I just like I, that it. I I just like that it tried something else. Well, I mean, it, it was still parallel direction. Hyrule, yeah. according I mean, to the yeah, game. it was a technically a parallel world, but it still tried something different. Like yeah, in terms I, of the plot, technicalities. It, I gotta tell you, my my favorite stuff? console right. Zelda game is Majora's Mask, and it will always be Majora's Mask, mm-hmm. unless of course Super Zelda use good. But I doubt wait, it will you be said console? Yeah, console. Oh, okay. 
So, I mean, I, I know it came out for the 3DS, but, like, I played it on the N64 when it came out. I played it on my Wii when it came out on Virtual Console. Um, mm-hmm. uh, however, like, um, I can see where Adam's Adam's a big uh, 2D guy. I am. You like, you, you like A Link to the Past. Adam's I, kind of... <laughs> but moving hey, on. you can't say that on the podcast, man. Listen, it's going to be fine. They'll replace it with DQ noises. It's fine. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave it in. Whatever. Oh no! I thought you said he was gonna replace it with DK noises. <laughs> That's how I want to censor everything <laughs> the, now. The DK noises in in Mario Kart. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, please. You, Post please. Adam, please. You got it, dude. You guys need to hear Paulson's uh, Donkey Kong impression. It's really funny. Gotten off topic. I'm, I apologize, but Majora's Mask is probably <laughs> like. I I haven't heard that reasoning before. That it's like the least Zelda of all Zelda games. But even though I ha- actually I, I think I have I just say in different it's forms. The least Zelda it just doesn't use all the same plot devices. Well, I mean, like it's Twilight Princess, game, its it tone is different the from the rest game. of the entire yeah. series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's also not not the least Zelda game though. True. What do you think is True. though the CDI is High Rule Warriors is pretty not Zelda like. Warriors isn't a Zelda though. That's a that's Dynasty Warriors with a Zelda yeah, skin I on know, it. But, yeah. It's like my favorite like, game right now. <laughs> I mean, it's a great game. Our Warriors. Yeah. yeah. Every time I ca- Sarah, every time I talk to you on Skype or anything, I always hear just like sound effects from High Warriors in I'm the playing background, it just constantly, all the time. Just, yeah, I'm it's ridiculous. Playing it. I remember Katie had that same period and Jeff too. Did which you is like, get the uh, Majora's Mask DLC. Oh yeah, I did. And do you giant exclusively chicken. play as Young Link? Yep. Good. Uh, what about Giant Cuckoo? I have not got that one yet. No. Oh, you need to. It's amazing. Well, all I'm... that matters is Young Link. When you, can't you play as when you get like the Ocarina of Time DLC? You can play as uh the the guy from the Gorons, the leader of the Gorons. What's his name? We are extremely Darunia? off topic. Darunia? That's fine. Yeah, him. But yeah, he's, he's like a giant hammer. He's he's like yeah, he's a regular hammer. character. Oh, okay. I thought you, he was in DLC or something. No, 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 no. You can play him right off the bat. You actually have to oh, play okay. him. <laughs> I always they don't like give you a choice. <laughs> Kid, here, here's the mass sword. I don't, I don't want it. Take it. What if you use it, play as the big Goron and just kind of slap <laughs> people around with your giant hands. <laughs> with your giant man hands. That would be hands. hilarious. I think, as opposed to your little hand. The great that fairy would be is fantastic. fun to play as. Like, <laughs> what if you could play the Legend of Zelda as Master Hand? Uh, yes, That's cheating. Uh, Jeff. What? Your favorite Zelda is Majora's Mask, but what yeah. is your least favorite Zelda? Do you have a, do you have a least favorite in the series? Ooh, that's a good question. Hang on, let me think. Um, I don't really know. I'm trying to think of one that I, like, disliked. Maybe start with something that, like, bu- like, the most irritating moment you've had in a Zelda game. Spirit Tracks. Spirit Tracks is not a moment in a Zelda game, it is a Zelda game in itself. <laughs> the entirety of the game, the entirety of the game was a f***ing pain. It was one long moment that was of just a uh... moment that I want to forget. <laughs> he had many moments. Uh, I don't think I ever actually played Spirit Tracks. Good. Really? Don't. I gave it a try recently. It was Well, that's, it was, that's, it was that's unfortunate. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know, I think... Looking back on it, the game that probably frustrated and annoyed me the most was probably Ocarina of Time. Really? <laughs> yeah. I, Shocking. I, think, I think, Jeff, you might be my favorite guest now. I mean, there was a lot of moments where it was just kind of like, yeah, do whatever. And you're like, what? What? What do I do? And you just kind of like wander around. And what do you mean? Navi was always telling you what to do in the Pikachu. game. <laughs> hey, listen. Hey, <laughs> like, listen. Hey, listen. She would, she would, like, tell you what to do, and then other times just kind of be like, I wonder what we do. And you're like, great! <laughs> I'm so glad that you're here. Gotta find Zelda. Thanks, Navi. I, I know that. Yeah, it was Why like, I'm sometimes here. when you knew what to do, like you when you were explicitly told by somebody else, Navi would still remind you. And then other times when you had no idea, when it was just totally left for you to figure it out, Navi wouldn't tell you anything. <laughs> I'm and not looking like, this one. You're the worst. <laughs> not as bad as Fee, actually. <laughs> I'm I sorry, it's Fi. I actually does I anyone say Fi? I, I don't say uh, Fi. I always say Fee. You I, know what? I don't really I care. I just really didn't like the, the blue lady that came out of the master sword. 
Hey, Adam, who's the sixth I person? Really like, is... I really yeah. liked her. Oh, with special guests on the podcast, Zach Hadel. Oh, uh, you know what? I mean, uh, anyway. Um... This is the podcast I've always wanted. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Zelda's pretty bad. It's pretty, it's pretty terrible. You, you look pretty terrible. Yeah. Anyway, but seriously, Fee was Fee was worse than Navi in that regard. But Ocarina of Time, I think I had the most moments where I was just like, I hate this game. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. But in terms of sidekick, Fee will always be the worst. <laughs> you know who will be the best? Okay, I'm tell him, Sarah. Tell him who's gonna, who's always going to be the best. Who? Midnight. No. <laughs> Sarah. I mean, Petra? I agree with that, actually. Mid is the best. As no, she's not. As low. Mm, as low is pretty the, good, he, yeah. Uncle. As low is the, the coolest. The uncle from Link to the Past. <laughs> he dies right. in like the first ten seconds <laughs> of the game. But he tells you to stay home because he cares Zelda's about like, you. What? Everyone else, like... Everyone else tells you to go into danger. He's the only one. Later on, he tells you how to defend yourself. He's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. He actually teaches you things. Hold the B button and then let it go. You'll be fine. Hey, Uncle, what's your name? I don't remember ever getting uh, it. I'm dead. Uh... <laughs> oh, oh, no, you don't get out of it like this. Actually, now that I think about it, him and I guess Link's sister and Wind Waker, those are the only two family members you ever see of Link, actually. Right? What about his grandma and Wind Waker? Do you see his grandma? But the Ganondorf soup. is his dad. Right? Wind Waker, Grandma Soup. Oh, she, oh, okay, I didn't know, I didn't play Wind Waker, I just know he had a sister in that game. Yeah, you see his grandma, and she's all, like, dying and whatever, and then you give her a fairy, and she makes you <laughs> soup. <laughs> Sounds great. Sounds yeah. accurate. To, Sounds like, like a typical you know... day. Dude, that soup is super baller. It, like, <laughs> it restores all your health and magic, and makes your hate What the soup. hell topic were we even on anymore? It doesn't matter anymore. We're talking about grandma. And she's dying. <laughs> Actually, yeah. one of the, the listeners emailed in and said that they would like to meet Toon Link and get some grandma soup. Dude, I would love to meet Toon Link and steal his Oh, so we're on topic then. It's fine. Yeah, kind of. Dude, Toon Link <laughs> seems like a cool guy. I would party with Toon Link. I would party with Ezlo. I'd take Ezlo. F- I actually think that his head. out of all of the links, the Link and Wind Waker is by far the most badass. Which because is technically also the same one in, in Phantom Hourglass. Because yeah. of the uh, the head spear thing, or stabs the guy in the head? Well, no, because he didn't have... He wasn't born as the spirit of the hero at all. Mm-hmm. He didn't have the Triforce of Courage. He earned it. He put it together. He built it like Legos. Yeah. And he restored power to the Master Sword. Everybody else just had power in the Master Sword. He's the oh, best I mean, Link. Link to the Past made the Master Sword better. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's true. But He's like, here's the Master Sword. Like, Gonna make it way time, better. By the time that Toon Link got the Master Sword, it was worthless. Yeah. He it's funny, those later games are... It was just a piece of crap. It was made oh. of, like, styrofoam. A lot of yeah, the later like, one, a lot of the later this... games in the series seem to have that recurring theme where you get to upgrade the Master Sword. Just That's like what I'm some... talking about. He didn't get to upgrade it. He just brought it back, <laughs> and then he put back together a godly item. He's a hipster and earned the this title. The Master Sword, bringing it back. It was like the spirit of the hero was dead, and he brought it back. The spirit of the hero. Do hipsters bring things they, back? So I cool. They tried to do the They opposite. bring back he's like old bald. things. He's a no... straight up gangster, bring all right? Sexy back. What? Have you guys ever heard the Legend of Zelda gangster raps? Like any of them? I've heard. I'd no, there's not. like there's there's like two that are. Speaking really of songs, good. hey guys, <laughs> thank you. What Adam. Zelda game has thank your you. favorite soundtrack? What's your favorite song from all of Zelda? I think if it in particular because of the Bard and Link between worlds is one of the greatest things to happen in Zelda. He plays songs from many games, but only games in his timeline, which makes the soundtrack songs really highly in tunes passed down through many generations. The only other game I can think of that does this is Bastion with the gram- gramophone and soundtrack intro. Thoughts on this? And Adam, will you bless us with an operatic rendition of your favorite song? No. I can sing you something after no. the podcast. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Post. All right, so... Stay tuned favorite... after the credits if you're my... curious. But yeah, I guess, Chris, you can start. My favorite Zelda game... With music and all, it's Majora's Mask, of course, but it's Same. more Majora's Mask because you can play all these songs in different instruments. You can play with like trumpets from Dooku Link or Deku Link, however you want to say. You play bongos with yeah, the Goron Link. You play guitar with the Zora Link, and like you could form a band in the bar, and 
you can form a band in the bar and you guys can play all these great songs and then you don't even have to play like the rest of the music like that they give you if you remember the tunes from the games before like not hearing time then you could play them there and those instruments and it's so cool i like wind waker's music a lot i still would have to say majora's mask is has my favorite songs but wind waker's a close second Mm -hmm. wind waker for me really yeah yeah i'm gonna go with the link between worlds you suck and the reason for the wow <laughs> you sir can see yourself to the door oh dude i've been hanging around the door this whole time <laughs> he is a door adam he just is a door he's a door to a new world all right door once everybody answers between this question worlds. i actually have a question of my own uh, okay the reason that i chose the linkedin worlds is because it takes all the good music from link to the past makes it way better and also the the overworld theme, I think, in Dark World, just that dun 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 dun. dun, oh, dun. They add that that guitar and everything. Just sounds so good. Katie, yeah, I feel like you should use same. Sarah. Sarah. Wow, apparently I'm Katie now. Whoa! Sarah, you both were in the chat. I got confused. <laughs> <laughs> what? Just because we're oh. women, they both sound the same. Yes. 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 I, exactly I have a reason. lot less of a sexier accent going on. Thank you very much. Uh, this one is really, 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 really hard for me to answer because I love the Zelda music. I'm actually going to the symphony tomorrow, which tomorrow. I guess the I guess for when this this is released, <laughs> for when this is released okay. yesterday, I'll have been at the symphony yesterday. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. How was it? Did you like? Yeah. It? How was? Uh, how I was loved it? it. Good. I got I got the tingles. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I get it. Uh, uh, puns. My favorite uh... individual. My my favorite individual song is the song of storms out of Ocarina of Time. Oh, I love that song. Yeah. I dun, love that dun, song. Dun, dun, but dun, dun, my favorite soundtrack <laughs> overall comes from Skyward. I, Skyward Sword. I didn't. I just threw up in my mouth. I oh, I God. didn't enjoy the <laughs> Skyward Sword. How about that? I didn't enjoy the the, the actual gameplay of it, but I love the Skyward score. I will sit there and listen to the music because it's beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, Fair it actually enough. does have a very good soundtrack. I mean, that's that's me and the Twilight <laughs> Princess music. I will sit down and listen to the entire listen, soundtrack. Because I, I... Deku Palace win over. Game over. Deku Palace. <laughs> actually, Jeff, done. you share you share uh, the same you know it's opinion as uh, our dark. good friend Smooth in the Groove, friend Whoa! of the show. He... Who's that? Dude, that guy's Oh, yeah. Cool we, when we talked to him, they had the same answer. I, I want to touch his beard. in the face, and then I would give him a kiss on the mouth. <laughs> well, I want to pet sure his cat. Him. Listen, I'm gonna tell him to his face whenever I do meet him, and then he's Actually, gonna be like, "What?" And then I'm just ne- gonna do it. Now that I think about it, Jeff. Ca- oh, all right, without the beard, Jeff could look like him in a way, but with more piercings and less beard. So I don't look like him. Is what you're no, saying? No, you. I mean, like you look like him with a different face <laughs> and facial hair and hair. No, they have a similar face. Piercings and what? How? <laughs> I don't know. You both have faces. Chris, I'm gonna to kill start. you. Are you? I'm straight. Are you I'm gonna kill you. Anyway, since uh, since I guess everyone answered the question, the question, Jeff, what did you want to ask us? Oh, I was gonna ask uh, what your favorite form of Link is, like Deku Link, Goron Link, Zora Link, or oh, from Majora's Link Mask, now. or just any of the games, I guess. Well, now you've just made it the whole thing of which which Link is the best. Which Link is your well, personal favorite? Well, it's not favorite. which one's the best. It could be the like. Let's yeah, say which you, one's your like, favorite? The worst Link. Like for example, my favorite Link is Deku Link because he's cute and awesome and can Deku. fly. <laughs> Whatever, Deku, Deku, Deku. Not to mention in the remaster, matter. he has like a club on the, the back wood of his guy. hat. You spin around, Jesus! Did you see that thing? Yes. Like in the original yes. version, it was just like just a, the tip of his hat, and now it's like a, a menacing, like brawling item. Yeah, my favorite form of Link is from the animated series. Oh God, good that choice. is actually good not going to lie. Well, top three me. because he's so, he's so different from like he's so uh, kind of putting away from form. He's he's he tries to be himself. They didn't make him like the other characters. They actually decided let's fit the medium better and which, make him yeah, which is fine. A, a character with a lot of personality. Let's make him someone who is a big shot because he is destined to be, and not because of any sort of reason. The uh, the link in the show, it's like, yeah, he's competent, but it's all because like he was born with sort of that that innate gift of just like he was being born an adventuring with hero. 
I don't know, some courage or something. <laughs> Call that chutzpah. Where chutzpah? I come from. Yeah. All right. Bless you. Uh, I Thank gotta you. say, my, <laughs> my favorite Link will always be Tomb Link. In, in, mm-hmm. in any iteration, because it pretty much looks the same in all of them. Um, and he's also my main in Smash Brothers. Oh, um, same here. Yeah, I love Tomb Link. I've always liked his design. He's so silly. Um, he's just, he's just crazy. I love him even more with Ezlo. I feel like, I was so mad when they put, didn't put like an Ezlo costume, like, thing for Smash Brothers. I feel like they could put that in his DLC or something. It oh, would yeah, look very so easily. perfect. him his, uh, lobster pajamas. That would look so cute! Right? Oh my god. I, I want that shirt so bad. I want like, it. He's always just been adorable and very appealing to me. Because I like Little Link. Do you, do you want to kiss him because he's a little boy? No. <laughs> I don't. In fact, I want that shit out of the podcast. You, you, you know what? We're, we're already on the record for most cursing. Per, for an episode. Oh man, I've been I've been doing I've been trying so hard not to swear. Like, and Chris is just cursing so up a storm. Bad. When I'm around so Jeff, hard. I'm sorry, Adam. I didn't mean to do this. I know I'm usually better. I'm better Listen, than this. Chris, this he's is young. Wh- he's a growing boy. He's this is why. <laughs> impression. This is wait, why. who? Me or Link? <laughs> Two Link? Both. Both of you. That's why you like him so much. But you mom, have stuff in common. I, are we still on the which is our favorite Link topic? <laughs> I have yes, a feeling whenever I see him. Uh, <laughs> mine's from uh, mine's from Twilight Princess. Your favorite Link? Yeah. Oh, okay. Why is that? I I just I love how like he starts off and he's just this like do 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 I'm a farmer he's a, and then he's a little farm boy he's a little farm boy and then he has to like get serious and it feels like he actually grows throughout the um the actual game like he grows with yeah. uh with his interactions with the other players and it's a lot more dark and he mm-hmm. he he uh he gets to experience a little bit of a love triangle towards the end there and i liked it um, he loves triangles and he doesn't know how to deal with it yeah on the you know. topic of twilight princess link i do like that he actually had some training prior to his adventure though like that, he had his sword yeah. fighting tutor yeah and he had it a made sword it fighting like tutor. a lot it made a lot more sense in my mind Absolutely. I mean, that's that's kind of why I liked uh, Link to the Past, Link, and why he's my favorite. Not just because, uncle? not no, <laughs> not because, not just because it's my it's probably my favorite Zelda game, but because it's it's not just that game. He has several games that he goes through where he gains experience, and he becomes like the most experienced and most adventured of every Link, sure. and he he I mean he t- he just does the most. He does yep. the most with the destiny. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I, I kind of appreciate that. Did we have another topic? Or? We do, uh, but it kind of has nothing to do with Zelda. That's fine. From a fan. Um, and I don't think you could answer this, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. Hey, Adam and Jake and Caleb, if he's around. You guys spend oh, so much... Oh, okay. <laughs> I love this question already. You guys... Sp- oh, you- I'm, I'm going to field this one. It's fine. You guys spend so much time talking about Hylian princesses and dank memes that you never properly introduced yourselves. I can tell you're in school, but what year are you guys? What are you studying? How did you get involved in Zelda Informer? Favorite ice cream flavor? Thanks as always for the amazing show, Aaron. Thank you for the topic, Aaron. All right. um, hey, Aaron. I'm going to answer this one for you guys. Please do. Adam's kind of a jerk. <laughs> and he's also a Jew. Uh, Chris is whatever. At least they know my heritage. Caleb is a cool guy. Yes! <laughs> All right, that's it. Yeah. Jeff, why would you boost his ego? I apparently don't <laughs> exist. Dude. Well, it was directed towards Chris, Adam, and Caleb. I guess. No, it wasn't Chris, directed it was towards di- Chris, Adam, and It was Chris, it was uh, Adam, Jake, and Caleb, if he was there. Oh. My bad. He's, all right, so there's, all right, I'm... I, Jake, actually, I don't I know wanna, Jake, but... I kind of want to just say... Mediocre at best. Jake's my buddy. <laughs> Guys, we have this Zelda Informer survey going on, and uh, we rate the podcast no. and such. You guys should oh, go and um, vote actually, bef- you should vote on that for topic. Me we as your favorite. We um, I'm obviously the best. We actually uh, have a survey going on uh, for the past couple of weeks. We've been uh, trying to collect data on what you guys think about the podcast, where you guys think it's going, who do you like the best guests, uh, in terms of like. Uh, people on the cast themselves and you know just giving us ways that we can improve because we're trying to make this a better show for you guys so if you have any of your own suggestions 
please click that survey link in the description below. Uh, if you're seeing this on Twitter or whatever. I mean, if you've seen the Twitter post or anything, it's probably also linked through there. Um, and if you have any fan topics, theme song submissions, anything of that nature, send those to us at ZeldaInformerPodcast at gmail.com. That's ZeldaInformerPodcast at gmail.com. We really appreciate your input. Uh, this week we're featuring a song by Zarek, who sent us a uh, Gerudo Valley remix. I listened to um, it nonstop. It was awesome. Re- really? All right. Oh, nice. I put it on. My boyfriend was even like, woo, that's awesome. And we were just listening to it on loop. You have to vote for <laughs> Topspin for the new host of the Zelda Informer. All right, thanks. Yes, vote, of Chris. the Zelda Informer? Not even the podcast. Just everything. Yeah, exactly. The whole thing. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Should we answer Aaron's question? Yeah, we should reasons. answer Aaron's question. Oh, I forgot oh, thank what you. it was. Thank you, Caleb. Um, oh, yeah, do you want to start? You guys, this one. I'll let you go and I'll follow your lead. All right. Um. So because that's what you do, Caleb. <laughs> my name is Adam. I say this every week, like three times. Uh. I am in. I'm in my starting my junior year this fall, uh, and I'm studying game design at the University of Central Florida. Uh, I got involved in, Z- in Zelda Informer through one of the bigger copy editors, uh, Jeffrey. Uh, some of you may have read his articles. Um, and through uh, a smaller group that I started called Zelda Misinformer, which is parody news, satire, that sort of thing. Uh, thank you to anyone who is from there, because you guys were rad. You guys made me really feel like I was appreciated a lot of the time. Uh, favorite ice cream flavor? It's between coffee and vanilla bean, because I love coffee. And Vanilla Bean is pretty rad. Um, and thank you for being a listener. Guess it's off to you, Caleb. Mine's not going to be nearly as sappy as that, but uh, <laughs> you know I'm Caleb. Um, I like Metroid and Castlevania a lot. Favorite games the world ends with you. Uh, My name is Caleb, and I like to say... Don't. I don't like when Adam sings <laughs> over me. Uh, Samus is I the like, best. I like... I like Top Spin's laugh a lot. It reminds me of my own. Aww. Uh, I like mint chocolate chip ice cream. If it's not green, you're doing it wrong. And true. <laughs> is Actually. this why you like Shrek? I mean, yeah. Caleb, all right, I'm trying to, I'm trying to interrupt you. But Spider-Man's, like, Spider-Man's my favorite hero. That's it. There you Spider-Man go. is rad. Caleb, I, so I went to San Francisco uh, like about a month ago, and I went to uh-huh. that Gurdelli Square place where the you know the Gurdelli ice cream and chocolate. Girardelli. Girardelli. Uh-huh. Girardelli. Same stuff. I mean, Anyways, one has more letters. Okay, Adam. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so I went there name. and I was ordering a a cool thing. It was like a it wasn't a shake or something. It was just some delectable ice cream slash shake type thing. And I wanted the mint flavor. Those those dirty, ugly people <laughs> said they ran out. They ran out. Oh my god! god. So my god! Mad. How dare they run out of stock? How dare they run out of mint ice cream? You should have broken all of their pots. I was about to go Just... piss in their chocolate fountain. You should have like, legitimately oh. killed someone. I was so mad, like, I, but I instead I ordered espresso flavored. It was good. Wow, way to compromise. You espresso owed yourself. Is... Anyway, I guess we can either do like let Jake do his own next time, or do you yeah, want to try to? We do can just ask him to answer dead. next time. He's no, Chris now. isn't allowed to do one. Uh, so do you guys want to talk about the news this week? Or do you want... I mean, we could... Uh, we, we have enough time. We could talk more about... Uh, I'd like to learn... Like, get the audience to know you a little bit more, Jeff. Yeah. Uh, we can talk about the news. Uh, Splatoon's getting another uh, global test fire this weekend. Oh, yeah? I'll probably yeah. miss it like I did last time. People went crazy over the last one. Did you, did any of you play it? No. Uh, I from, thought about uh, it. No, friend I did the show. You what? I, Jeff? Well, oh, I thought about getting it and then I didn't. And yeah, it's uh, it was a demo. You basically play for free if you had a Wii U. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, staying completely blind until it comes out. Really? Yeah, I, I'm really excited for it. I don't want to. The internet went nuts over they the test fire. Sure did. Like there, I I was on. I've been on Tumblr, Twitter, whatever. Everywhere there's just fan art, just flooding social. Kind of made me want to puke a little. About bit. About an hour. People already later have their own was... like. Squid Sonas or whatever they're called. Splatoon. Oh God, no! Sonas. Oh, did you see? Oh, um, Jesus! Peanut Butter Gamer actually got the amiibo for Splatoon. Like Nintendo sent them to him. Yeah, I saw a Nintendo fangirl the same same th- sort I of thing. I was like, God, God dang it! I mean, <laughs> you want Nintendo? What the heck? Challenge I've heard... him to a fight. And I've heard if the you uh... win, then you can get the amiibo. <laughs> I haven't I haven't played it, but uh, Paulson did, and he was at Paulson, aka Screw, it's the animator. 
he Dude, told me that he had a lot scary. of fun. He said it was it, it was the next it's going to be like the next big thing. Mm-hmm. They said the amiibo quality for uh, Splatoon is way better. That they really are uh, fixing a lot of the problems that were going on with Smash Bros. Good, they're going to re-release the the qualities. I mean, they they were no. uh, for the Super Mario uh, set from I think Mar- was it Mario Party, the uh, second um, game to get amiibo with the gold statue Mario and the Mario Party Ten. Yes, I think it was Mario Party Ten. Yeah, uh, Mario Party got them, and that then that's where they suck. Uh, I... Yes, but the but the amiibo were all much better. I heard Mario Party Ten was okay in mm. some modes. Yeah, it's, I, it's mediocre too. Eh. I mean, everyone, I, really, everyone. The, I mean, the common, you know, the common census is that like the earlier games are the better ones. You know, so what happens when you make ten of something? I mean, ask. I I don't know, man. There's been ten I seasons of It's Always Sunny, and like it's they've been really good. They've been really on point. It's Always You're Sunny right and Hyrule would be an amazing show. Oh god, no. Who? Uh, what if Link was no. like Charlie Day? <laughs> oh my no. god. Now he understands. No, I would be all over that. Only if that Ganon's so be funny. Danny DeVito. <laughs> what if Ganon was Danny DeVito? Yeah. <laughs> Link, I'm gonna catch you. Don't worry about it. Oh, please. Oh, please. And then, and then Dennis could be like... <laughs> what if Dennis, Dennis is, Zelda. is Zelda. <laughs> no. No, D should be Zelda. <laughs> I... I feel like I have I, to make this. I feel like now. Dennis is more of a Zelda. But I'm trying to think who the other two characters are. I want if... Rickety Cricket to be Zelda. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, we need to god. stop this. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> uh, <laughs> go check out It's Always Sunny, guys. It's on Netflix, and it's a fantastic show. Have you guys seen the reviews for The Witcher 3? I at have all? not. You've not? No. Very good. Lots yep. of uh, inappropriate adult Lots. stuff. Um downgrade of graphics of graphical uh integrity or something like Can that. Can I touch on that for a quick second? Sure. <laughs> I feel like uh, Caleb's gonna say what I think he's gonna say. You, you probably. There was a time where C D Project said something along the lines of Please don't say that we're gonna downgrade our game. What did they do? Downgraded they did. downgraded the game. So shut up. C D project. Go ahead guys. Uh, but, I mean, I heard a lot of good things. I haven't played it yet. Actually, I just got Witcher 2 Enhanced Edition on Steam for, like, two bucks the other so day. So you're going to play a bad game? I'm going to play a game that leads up to third game. Uh, The Witcher 2 is a bad game. Is it? Yeah, I, it's like I playing Zelda, okay. but without all the fun. Uh, I don't know, man. I heard it was pretty good. It was okay. And plus, it was only $2. I played through the whole for thing. $2, for $2, for $2. I mean, that game is worse than Wind Waker to me. Uh, oh, I mean, I have never played Wind Waker. Well, what's so wrong know. with Wind Waker? Do you want to fight right now? Is that what's going on? Do you want to go on oh. a fetch quest? Because that's Wind Waker. I, fetch quest. I mean, I agree. <laughs> it has a lot of faults. <laughs> Every but Zelda damn, has faults. I wouldn't call it bad. Caleb has faults. You're right. But Caleb that's why I love him. seems like a chill dude, alright? I would dude. party with Caleb. Appreciate dude, it. I partied with Caleb one time. You have not. And we, like, haiku- we haikued with each other, and it was fin- it was phenomenal. That was phenomenal. That we was an actual thing that happened thing. once. We we haikued. Oh. All right, what's next? Actually, I uh, I have a little idea here. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, friend Jeff, friend of the show, is what we'll call you. What's up? So you are you are a man of uh, some very nice talents, especially in the art field. I don't know about that. Go you on. are the <laughs> lovely artist. I deny man. these allegations. <laughs> I, you, I don't I don't know if that's true. I think you're known on the liar. internet as Top Spin the Fuzzy. Mm-hmm. Aren't yeah. you a game grump or something? He, I wish he, that, you. That he's cool. done a, a game grump anime. Yes, that's correct. I did two. One of them was on their channel. Oh, sweet! <laughs> you made some Excuse really me. cool stuff. Actually, the first time I've ever seen your stuff was probably the uh, Wind Waker one you did. The, uh, oh uh, yeah, the yeah, yeah the, and it was the ghost ship. Yeah, I love that one. It's amazing. That one was pretty all right. Uh, no, it you you did great. I love the way that you <laughs> pretty do. Pretty all right, dude. You did um, phenomenal, Jeff. A lot of artists that I see um, have this problem that I think that you don't, what? which is, and it's a little bit, doesn't really have anything to do with the Wind Waker sort of thing, but uh, the, the ghost ship animation that you did, but just in general, whenever I see your art, um, you have a lot of motion to it. Everything seems to feel very alive, and a lot of people oh, seem yeah. to have a problem with that, where... A lot there's... of people go for, like, a pose as opposed to, like, uh, like a character. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, they go for putting a character in a position as opposed to having the character do a thing. 
Yeah. And I feel like even a pose for you just has energy to it. It's it's very rare that you, you see that sort of thing, that you see that sort of, like, excitement just in the actual art itself. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> So, yeah, no problem. Uh, but you're also you, on, you, um, well, he, besides the art, you also do a lovely podcast known as the the Doodle Club podcast. What's it like doing a podcast? It's terrible. I've never it's wanted the worst. to. I, Zero to ten. I, I've always wanted to do one before, but I've never had the opportunity. I know, right? Uh, I wanted to kind of ask more about your animation work a little oh, bit before yeah. we got into that. Um, oh, yeah, so, did you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Our lab go, is too similar. On, it scares me. Come on. Um, <laughs> so you recently did a uh, an animation with uh, Rice Pirate. Uh, you have the Samus uh, quick uh, speed draw. Yeah. That you recently released. Um, how did you get to work with like uh, like? I mean, we 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 interviewed Mick last week. Uh, what was it like working on? Uh, was it Sonics? Was the yeah. uh, name of the animation? What, what was it like working on that? Uh, doing that sort of stuff. Pretty uh, relaxed, actually. Like, when... Honestly, the whole... Mm. Alright, time for a story. <laughs> <laughs> the whole way I got involved in that project was one day, when I was super tanked, I decided to tweet at Mick and just be like, Alright, as an animator, if I wanted to help out the Sleepy Cabin, how would I go about contacting you guys? And then he just followed me, and then he sent me a message, and was like, add me on Skype. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> and then we chatted for a bit, and then he sent me the script for Sonics a little bit afterwards. And it was like, if this is something you're interested in working on. And I was like, hell yeah. And then, yeah. And then I would just kind of go back and forth with him, like mm -hmm. giving him updates and uh, seeing if like it was all cool and if he wanted me to change anything. And yeah. Mm -hmm. He, yeah, I remember him saying yeah, that working with you was a very pleasurable experience because you tend to. He, he said that you have this knack for knowing know, knowing what he wanted, without him even telling you. Yeah. Well, I mean, I kind of I kind of made sure to get a few questions out of the way when mm -hmm. we were initially talking about it, like how, what kind of thing he was going for, so mm -hmm. that I had an idea, and then I just kind of went forward with how I viewed that idea, and I guess it just kind of lined up like that. Oh, I just uh, want to add on to Sonic's. Yeah. You did that cartoon with Rice Pirate, uh, Navarki, and also Pulse and Screwitz. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, Screwitz and Navarki were the voices in it, were some of the voices in it. And they did a fantastic job. I was quite pleased. <laughs> to be awesome. Working with their wonderful voices. What is it like? Uh, what well, you you do Doodle Club, which you do work with some other animators and artists on. Uh, what is it like, kind of being a part of the sort of online community where you work with other people in this sort of medium? It's not really oh. a job that other people can have. How many My God, can do this? it's super bizarre to me actually, because it's only just started happening within this last like few months. So the whole experience is weird and new. <laughs> so I don't really know what to think of it yet, because I'm like, um... Trust me, okay. when the cons start coming up, then it gets even weirder. You are going you to your first convention. Like, I am. Uh, I'm going so... to Too Many Games at the end of next month. Where, Dude, where is awesome. that at? It's in Oaks, Pennsylvania, I believe. Do you have to say it like that? Welcome yeah. to Oaks, Pennsylvania. No, I just couldn't remember if that's what okay. it's actually called. I just had to look at it. It's in the... Greater whatever you can find it on the <laughs> yeah. website too many games dot com, uh, <laughs> but uh, and yeah, it's got a uh, bunch of cool people going. Yeah, but uh, other than that, what are you stuff. working on lately? What's your? Uh, I've got one thing that's a secret, and I've got another thing that is, uh, it's a Monster Hunter parody cartoon, mm -hmm. and I'm working on a motion comic as well. So that'll be fun. And past that, I'm just kind of throwing ideas around. And nothing's really coming of those yet. But yeah. All right. Yeah. And speed now, paints and whatever. And that's it. Now, Jeff, if uh -huh. anyone were to want to follow you later or even go on to support you, uh -huh. where would they Where would they go for said places, said items? Uh, well, you can follow me on the Twitter. Uh, at Topspin the Fuzzy. Be linked down below. We will have all the 
sort of and lovely things that you can do to check out his stuff. You can support uh, me on Patreon. It's also yeah. Topspin the Fuzzy. You can basically find me everywhere at Topspin the Fuzzy. <laughs> if you look in yeah. your mailbox, you can find him. Yeah. He's in there. If you, you, in, like, if you your go attic. in your backyard behind the trees with binoculars. <laughs> I'm really looking is. under my bed right now. He's here. Yeah. Hey, what's up, man? Say hello, Jeff. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh. 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 Uh, anyway. But, yeah. The uh, uh, with E3 coming up, the Nintendo World Championship, they announced recently how to enter it. Uh, there's going to be like eight Best Buys across the country. Sorry, I just wanted eight. to get into this because we're running out of time, and I wanted to just get into this really quick because we're E3 time is upon us. Um, yeah, eight Best Buys across the United States. So that, that that's what like what they did last year with the Smash Bros. Um, and yeah. they did it with some another game I think last year. It was like uh, Mario Maker. I think they're doing it as well. Oh, that's. Uh, cool. Yeah, that's what they were doing it with Mario Maker. Okay. There's that coming up. There's uh, a couple of conferences that are coming up. Nintendo's having their conference on Sunday uh, before E3. What What are you looking forward to at the event? Uh, from Nintendo, from other companies, uh, are you hoping that we might get another Zelda title announced? What do you think? I kind of I kind of want another metroid game announced yes. and i also kind of want to see more about that Star Fox game and more about zelda u <laughs> well the thing yeah. is that there is going to be a playable demo for Star Fox. Oh. There, there you see prob- probably and that's 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 what i'm looking forward to because pretty sure that was already confirmed yeah uh, i mean they already said that they, we, they would show us more later in the coming months Star Fox, and it's, i it's mean it's probably gonna coming be... out this year it's got to be at e3 exactly. it's really big it's got to be playable it's got no review oh, yet it's... Oh um, yeah, and uh, Zelda U. They said they're not going to have any three. No Zelda. Uh, they're going to focus on instead on the development because they have a lot of new ideas, which uh, gives Metroid some room to breathe. Yes, and be overshadowed by Captain Toad Two. Yeah, well, man. Actually, I don't. I don't have as much of a problem with Captain Toad as I. I don't think did, anyone can initially did. No. At first, I thought it was kind of stupid. But then what? I saw some of the Captain gameplay. Toad's so great. Well, no, when I first heard of it, I, is what I mean. And then when I saw some of the gameplay, I'm like, all right, this is creative and fun. Yeah. I can't, I can't hate on this. I got that game for Christmas. And I you know like, it used oh, to be a uh, Zelda title? Hmm? Captain Toad. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Did it? Yeah. Is, it, is that so? Yeah, that is so. Really? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Really? It's the most Would you, would you swear by that in court? I would. In, Spooky on, court? Would you? In Nintendo court. Yes. <laughs> no, spooky court. Spooky it's the most court like of all court. What? <laughs> yeah, spooky court. Have I you ever mentioned Captain spooky Toad. spooky court on the Drill Club podcast? Uh, probably not. Oh, okay. What is what is spooky court for the us that don't know? It's court for nonsense, memes, and ghosts. <laughs> Something that has come <laughs> up in conversations. Memes and ghosts. <laughs> memes. Yeah. Oh god. Uh, gr- great that we're ending this on such a uh, beautiful Jeff, note. I hear you're a man huh? of memes. Oh yeah, absolutely. No meme all day. No hashtag meme. Please no. no. <laughs> and and uh, on that note, Adam, <laughs> I think it's uh, I think it's about time we should wrap it up. Uh, I want to thank you guys for joining me, uh, Sarah, Chris, Caleb, Jeff. Um, okay, it's a fun episode. And uh, sure, anything that Perfect. you guys want to say before we say goodbye? Thank you for listening to the Zelda Informer podcast. This has been Chris. Please vote for me. I need your support. <laughs> <laughs> Don't yeah, vote for Chris. I, whatever you do. Yeah, I hate Captain Toad. Vote for me every instead. Time I beat it. It says I did the new host, it, and I have to beat it again. This is what? Sarah saying thanks for joining us. You heard me. <laughs> can we? Can you add another like option to the poll that is just beating up Chris? As the like, would you no, beat up Chris? That'll just win. That's, that's the just place where I'll get like the most votes, where people yeah. will beat me up. Would you? Yeah, exactly. Maybe. Dude, I would absolutely. I would love to fight Chris. Tech- Thanks for listening oh, to the podcast, fight everyone. everybody. Jeff, you yeah, will destroy it. I promise you. Sure, whatever. Have you thank seen you my for your questions. Mass? Thank for your submissions. <laughs> yeah, Thanks thank you for, for submitting your fan topics, theme songs, submissions, everything like that. Uh, and if you this take last... the survey. Thank you for that as well. Yeah, please take the Thanks. survey. Uh, yeah. Please thank listen you. to. Uh, please enjoy Zorix, uh, Gerudo Rally. J- Zorks Gerudo Fa- Valley remix, uh, which is the end of the episode. What? Gerudelli. Gerudelli Valley. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Gerudella Gr- Valley. Bye bye, guys. <laughs> See right, ya. Bye. Thank you. I don't want to.
Hey guys, it's Adam. Uh, I just decided to record that song since someone asked. Uh, none of the other people are here. I'm just doing this by myself after the podcast. Um, but uh, I'm going to be singing Apartment by Young the Giant. Uh, so here's a bit of it, I guess. After leaving my apartment, I feel this cold inside of me. It howls away all through the market. It calls your name, oh, on my way to your apartment, I write for fear of silence, you carved a boat to send my shadows, now I walk alone, I hit the sidewalk, and this is how it starts. Hide in a raincoat when things are falling apart. Cause sooner or later, this is bound to stop. Come on, let's save her what we're falling for. Yeah, so there you have it. Thanks for listening to this week's episode. Uh, check out more uh, next week. Hopefully, you go back and listen to other ones. Share with your friends. Fill out our survey. Follow us on Twitter. We love you guys. Bye-bye.